Hurricanes are some of the most terrifying natural disasters. These storms can grow to be hundreds of miles across, able to swallow states whole. They have incredibly deadly winds, spawn tornadoes, and can cause storm surges with the power to wash away cars, homes, and of course, people. Now, think about some of the most notable hurricanes throughout history. By what category can we measure their impact on societies? Is it how deadly they are? How powerful their winds were? How much damage they ended up causing? We think that all of these are noteworthy. So, here's our list of the five biggest hurricanes in human history, encompassing various categories. If you enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe to Underworld to see more just like it. In terms of natural disasters that have the potential to take the lives of the most people, few things equal the potential of hurricanes. One place in the world that generates a number of hurricanes each year is the Northern Indian Ocean, except here, they're known as cyclones. As opposed to the rest of the world, this area is especially prone to severe destruction by hurricanes because many of the countries are on the poorer end of the spectrum, not offering its residents many options for shelter. This was the case on November 11, 1970, when a monstrous cyclone formed out of the Indian Ocean. Named Cyclone Bola, it had its sights on the area of eastern Pakistan, which is now known as Bangladesh. Warnings were issued by the local meteorological service for residents to take shelter or evacuate. However, the majority of people did not have a place to shelter or were simply unable to get there. The storm struck with incredible force and devastated everything in its path. After everything was said and done, between 300,000 and 500,000 people lost their lives. This makes Cyclone Bola the deadliest hurricane in the history of mankind. One place that was struck hard was the city of Tazimuddin, where 167,000 people lived. After the cyclone passed, over 45% of its population had perished. The vast majority of deaths were caused by the massive storm surge that the storm had brought, which was estimated to be 35 feet high. It roared over the flat, low-lying regions and swept away everything and everyone in its path. With so much damage done, it took many years before the area was able to recover. There are many various things that make hurricanes deadly. But one of the most infamous qualities is the storm's wind speed. Yes, high winds are commonly more associated with tornadoes, but believe it or not, hurricanes can have sustained winds that are as strong as an F3 tornado. That's like a tornado that is nearly as big as a state. Now, you may think that this is a bit of an exaggeration. However, you'd be wrong. This next hurricane proves it. In October of 2015, a hurricane formed just off the coast of Mexico in the eastern Pacific Ocean. This was Hurricane Patricia. It was one of the most perfectly formed hurricanes they had ever witnessed. However, the hurricane had something that the scientists had never seen before. Sustained winds of 215 miles or 346 kilometers per hour. Not only that, the wind speed built at an incredible rate. Within the span of 24 hours, the winds increased by 120 miles or 193 kilometers per hour. Winds of such speed had never before been measured in a hurricane. An F3 tornado is considered to be one of significant power, measuring between 158 and 206 miles per hour. However, the most powerful areas of Hurricane Patricia had sustained winds that were as devastating as an F4 tornado. This is incredible and horrifying at the same time, knowing that the part of the storm with such wind speeds can be as large as an entire county. Luckily, for this particular storm, the loss of life was not as bad as it could have been. The biggest damage was done to farmland and suburbs. Around 10,000 homes were damaged, and over 100,000 acres of farmland were pretty much destroyed. We have talked a little bit about how monstrous hurricanes can be. One of the previous record holders was a storm named Typhoon Marge in August of 1951. 
This monster measured a whopping 700 miles across. To give you an idea, that's about a quarter of the distance from New York City to Los Angeles. It would be easy to swallow a couple of states in there, but this entry isn't to talk about Typhoon Marge. Why? It's because Typhoon Marge wasn't the largest hurricane ever recorded, not by a long shot. That title goes to Typhoon Tip. Building strength in the Pacific Ocean, Tip was the largest cyclone ever recorded. At its maximum size, it measured 2,220 kilometers across, which is 1,380 miles. This is large enough to engulf half of the continental United States. On top of that, Tip had maximum sustained winds of 190 miles per hour, making it a very strong Category 5 storm. U.S. Air Force aircraft flew 60 different reconnaissance missions into the typhoon, making Tip one of the most closely observed tropical cyclones ever. Along with the sheer size and high winds, Tip dumped massive amounts of rain over parts of Japan and other countries. Tip was responsible for over 600 mudslides throughout the mountainous regions of Japan and flooded more than 22,000 homes. The storm eventually turned northward towards Russia and Alaska before finally breaking up. But in its wake, 42 people had died, with another 71 missing and 283 injured. As you can see so far, there are plenty of ways to measure a hurricane rather than just size and strength. You have to measure it by how much it impacts an economy. In other words, how costly it is in terms of money. It definitely seems like a shallow thing to consider, especially when you have people dying because of these storms. But what needs to be considered is that the local governments will somehow need to pick up the pieces of their cities after it's all done. In August of 2005, a storm was forming in the Gulf of Mexico. It started approaching the area of New Orleans, Louisiana. As it did, it suddenly intensified into a Category 5 hurricane as it struck. It was an incredibly disastrous event for the city, as Katrina brought with it over 20-foot-high storm surges. One reason for this was because the city's levees were only designed to withstand the storm surge and power of a Category 3 hurricane. The incoming ocean enveloped the levees, sending massive amounts of water into the city, killing thousands and damaging nearly all of the structures. An estimated 80% of New Orleans was left underwater, with some places measuring nearly 20 feet deep. Hurricane Katrina caused $81 billion in property damages, but it is estimated that the total economic impact in Louisiana and Mississippi may exceed $150 billion, earning it the title of the costliest hurricane to ever hit the United States. You can talk to any meteorologist and they will tell you that predicting the path of a hurricane isn't exactly a science. There are many things that can go into determining the direction that the storm will take. The best things that scientists can do is to estimate where it will go, how strong it will get, and when it may fizzle out. So Cyclone John must have taken them completely by surprise. In 1994, just off the coast of Central America, Cyclone John formed. It wasn't much to be awestruck about, as it didn't initially pack much of a punch. It stayed off the coast and ended up traveling westward. Over the course of a couple of weeks, it just kept going and going and going, eventually reaching the Hawaiian Islands. By this time, it had strengthened to have sustained winds of 175 miles per hour. After John was done with Hawaii, it continued westward. A couple of weeks later, it turned north and fizzled out into nothingness. Meteorologists were astounded because typically cyclones only last a week or two and travel maybe a couple thousand miles. Cyclone John set records for both how far it traveled and how long it lasted as a hurricane. Once it had broken apart, John had traveled 7,165 miles, which is 13,280 kilometers. Additionally, it lasted for 31 straight days as a hurricane, which was also a record. As we said, 
There are many ways to measure a hurricane rather than to just look at its size, speed, or damage. Doing this helps us to understand many things about the large and deadly storms, thereby giving us a better ability to protect ourselves when we find ourselves under threat from one of these massive storms. To see more videos just like this one, be sure to click the link on screen now. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.